prior to installation, uh, we want to take the sensors, put them in a bucket of water, get them wet, take them out and let them dry, soak them, let them dry, soak them and let them dry for three times. Then when you take them to the field, you want to make sure you have them soaked uh, prior to installation. That way you're going to have, uh, get good readings and accurate information. Prior to installation or at installation, you want to take the handheld meter, you want to check, put the two clips on the sensors and see what they read. Uh, they should read zero if they're completely wet. They'll read 199 if they're dry. And so we recommend uh, keeping the sensors if they're reading less than uh, 10. It's really pretty easy to go ahead and check that and, and see, see where they're at. We typically install uh, these sensors in representative areas of the field. We install them at one, two, and three foot depths. I'm going to go ahead and install the one foot sensor. Be sure and take a soil crop consultant's soil probe. It's a little smaller than a regular field probe. So you want to make sure that you have the proper uh, diameter probe. We remove the soil down to one foot and then we'll go ahead and we'll install the sensor uh, at that location. We want to make sure we get a good snug seal and fit at the bottom. We then go ahead and install the second and third foot uh, probes in the similar way. As we install the sensors, uh, it's a good idea to make sure you know which is which. Either number them with a felt tip uh, pen, one, two, and three for the one foot, two foot, three foot depths, or you can use one knot, two knots, three knots uh, for them. Then also be sure and flag the area and GPS it. Uh, make sure you know where those sensors are, especially if you're going to have to come back and read them uh, on a weekly basis. When we read the sensors, uh, we can either use a handheld meter where we've got two clips that we clip to the sensor, push read, and then we get a, a number from 1 to 200. That reading is going to mean different things based on your soil soil type that you have. So it's important to have uh, our chart, which is located up on our water website, that will tell you what the meanings of those numbers are. The sensors are measuring the amount of energy in kilopascals that it takes to remove the soil or the water from the soil. The higher the reading, the drier your sensors are. You can also use a data logger in which you hook the sensors to the data logger and you can set it to read once an hour or uh, more, less frequently if you want. Set it once an hour, it'll read sensors uh, and collect the data for 170 days. You can then chart the information based on uh, that information. If uh, you don't have a data logger, if you've got a smartphone, you can also download the UNL Crop Water app, which will take the sensor readings that you have, you input them into there based on your soil type, and then it'll tell you how much soil water you have left or how much you've removed from the profile. At the conclusion of the season, uh, removing the sensors and storing them, it's important to go ahead and do that as soon as the season's over. Uh, it can be very difficult. Uh, we do have a, a producer that has prepared or made a water mark sensor puller. It works very well and it sure helps save the back. And so if you've got very many sensors you're going to be installing and using, I'd probably suggest getting one of those to make extracting the sensors a lot easier. For more information about using watermark sensors, uh, be sure and check out our water website. We also have a publication on the principles and operational characteristics of watermark granular matrix sensors. 
Uh, it does a great job of explaining how to install them and what the numbers mean. Uh, we've got a lot of information there. We've got several charts at our website that can help uh, with using them.